Hi, this is Tampa Tech, and learn something new from PC, TVs, and gaming too. Let's get it started. This is cool to watch too. Now if you have a TV like this, and this is a Dell TV, but it doesn't matter. There's a plasma TV, and some plasma TVs have this issue. Well, if you look real close, you get a lot of noise, interference, um, aka snow, whatever you want to call it. And that's usually coming from the power supply. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. It's like red, green, blue, kind of like sparkles all over the screen. Just like that. Now if you see that right there, that little mark right there, that's a burn-in because plasmas, if it stays in one spot too long, sometimes you get a burn-in. But that's uh, you could actually buy a DVD and it's a plasma DVD that does sweeps of like a white scrolling bar going back and forth and it'll smooth, it, smooth that out and fade it out so you don't get that burn out anymore. See, you can see letters. But anyway, um, that's if you there's an image that's paused too, for too long of a period but to fix this sparkles I'm going to show you and on this TV you would have to use a torque screw I mean torque bit you get that out of like an automotive store it's pretty cheap it's like under 10 bucks but it looks like a star shaped bit just like that and uh, See how it's torque shaped, it's like a star shaped screw. So you get that uh, bit at the automotive store right there. Sometimes you can use a small a small flathead screwdriver, squeeze in there, it should work just the same. Just be careful you don't break your um, flathead. And there's a bunch of screws all over the border and also in the middle. So I take those screws off. So this is an old Dell Plasma TV. It's about oh, close to 10 years old and you can see it's very busy and that's the video board right there that's where you plug in all your video inputs there's the power supply right there so you plug in the power right in here and then it goes right there right next to that is the fuse that's the power coming in the power supply and converts the AC into DC right here it looks like someone worked on it so that's why you see these weird capacitors you know off on the side taped up on the heat sink which is pretty hot heat sink so this is typically you want to do that I didn't, this was an old repair from like years ago so anyway if you look right around here in the middle you'll see a bulge capacitor I don't know if you see that the one on the left and that is um, location number C and the C stands for our uh, capacitor, C661. That's the location number on the power supply board. Or you could just buy the power supply board itself. And even though it's a Dell, um, it's Samsung power supply. See, and that's the part number right there. I don't know if you can see that. See, here's another thing. Here's another capacitor. I don't know what kind of technician did this, but they shouldn't have done it like that. They should have uh, just put in the capacitors right in the spots where they were, should be. But I guess the pop capacitors popped in there because this heat sink is hot and this heat sink is hot. And uh, these capacitors are heat temperature sensitive. So it probably caused them to get baked faster than they should. And the capacitors popped you know, within their lifespan, under the lifespan. They should have lasted. So the part, here's the model number right there for the part board. Yeah, just shine the light a little lower. Right there, that's the part number for the capacitor board. So you would get that board, order it, and just pop it in, and it should be fine. But it's more like uh, they shouldn't have put the heat sinks between the capacitors. And the person who repaired this last a couple years ago, a few years ago, how long ago was it? A few years ago? Four years ago it lasted a pretty long time like like that but uh yeah then you don't do it like that you would just replace it and just put it back into that circuitry but you can't really do anything with the design of the circuit board it's kind of like you're stuck with you get what you get but uh i mean it's pretty amazing that it lasted that long so you just replace that capacitor and that capacitor is so there's a temperature thing on here you just shine a little higher yeah, there's a temperature. It says 105 Celsius. Mm -hmm. 
And then where's the um, capacitor rated? It's kind of hard to see that. It's a 200, 2200 microfarads. Yep, 2200 microfarads looks like. So the part is, if you read on the bottom, it's a 2200 microfarad, 10 volt. So what I would do is I would get a capacitor that's um, 2200 microfarad, maybe 25 volt or 10 volt. That's fine. Ten, um, the voltage rating is basically how much you can handle up to. And then I would do a higher temperature. In instead of 105 Celsius, I would do something higher than 105 so it could withstand a higher temperature because it's between the two heat sink. It's in a hot spot, basically. And uh, that should fix it from popping in the future. And that's what these guys did. It looks like they put a 35 volt capacitor and they couldn't fit it in there. I think the original ones were 10 volt. And this is, uh, what is this? These are 100. I think the ones that popped were um, 100 microfarad. No, 2200 microfarad. Yeah, I think they were 2200 microfarad, 10 volt. And they replaced them and they couldn't fit it in there. And now they're, uh, they upgraded it to a 35 volt. Which lasted, it still works. Those are still good capacitors. They just, couldn't fit it in there, so that's what they did. They could have done a little bit better job, <laughs> except for like electric tape. I don't know. Anyway, that's how you fix it. And uh, if you replace those capacitors, it's like three. You got one right there, and it's uh, C624, C661, and the other one I can't read because there's gunk in the way. But I think they're all the same rating. So anyway, uh, post, comment, subscribe, check out my other TV repairs. So if you replace those three capacitors, you should be in good shape. And they're 22 micro, um, 2200 microfarads, uh, 10 volt, but I would increase it a little higher. You could do um, a higher temperature as well, but keep it at 2200 microfarads. And also, by the way, if your capacitors are not swollen or bulged, they could still be bad. Some bad capacitors sometimes look good, but are actually indeed bad. And they're right there in the power supply. Thanks for watching.